Monica, the uh, iPad working out? Yes, it is. Cool. Thank you. Yours too. He's sitting right next to me. He's sitting right next to me. He's sitting right next to me. To you guys, to the people who came. It's for me. I'm going to talk. It's for me. I'm going to talk. You're going to play presidential speeches. I have a gallery one. I'm your neighbor. Yeah. 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 I am. Yeah, I just got. Um, well, here we are. <laughs> How are you? That's okay. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Test, test, test. Right? I just move, push, roll. Test, test, test. I know. It's, just, it's got the perfect tilt. It just likes to roll over. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's on wheels. I can push it. They've got a um, trash can dumpster. Um, I just didn't know. I want you to check. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah. So, all right. If you want, I, 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 will, uh, I'll I broke my first rule, which is to not say anything. So I was like, okay, well, no one else said it. Bruce says the first thing about the nine best things. I'm going to say it. I'm going to do it. It's broke through. I broke through. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy, happy to be here, I think. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'm like getting the chair right, learning the bathroom code. You know. Oh no, that's easy. Are you, gonna, are, you, are, you, are you singing the Ellensburg song? Uh, am I singing? Well, I lead the meeting in song. I know, the flag. You have to take a turn around the room. No, I can do that. Oh man, I might be too nervous to even remember the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, that's so, it's like, you're on, it's, it's pressure, right? The words, it's like, oh wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know it, but yeah. 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 I'm like surrounded by Miller. Oh, so you're, that's, 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 Miller. Well, I was saying it works for me. It's it's Miller. Miller. Oh, that's what? It's very it's symmetric. Like, yeah. That's what? <laughs> And I was like the second time. No, it is. It's had like yes. Miller. It's like yeah. F Miller, D Miller, M Miller. You know, it's like all that. You gotta be really specific. Well, I was happy to be on this side when I read that you go alphabetically. Uh -huh. okay. 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 I did you four. Did you last? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I did ask her about that in our meeting. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. So, or signatures. So, you would like to, or you can just pass it on. Yeah, I'll just jump right in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if there's a problem, yeah, I'll just take it out, out of my monthly allowance. Yeah. So, just start it out. New agenda page. Oh, no. So, it goes, it goes that way. All sorts of stuff. I do that like this. So, okay. What am I getting? Okay, welcome to the Ellensburg City Council meeting of February 7th, 2022. Um, this is our regular meeting. We um, previously had a study session on the Pearl Street pedestrianization uh, report that we received. Um, we, we will start with a Pledge of Allegiance. I want to welcome Monica Miller to the council and she gets to lead the pledge. No, really? <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Oh. 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 
pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States and to the republic for one nation, Hey, thank you. So, will the clerk take the roll? Elliot? Here. Goodlow? Here. Lilquist? Here. David Miller? Here. Monica Miller? Here. Tab? Oh, I'm here. <laughs> Win? Here. Okay, thank you. Um, we have one proclamation. It is National Black History Month, and we have Premier Jackson to read it. Welcome, Premier. Thank you so much. Thank you. It is such a pleasure and an honor to be here this evening, and thank you, Nancy, for giving me this opportunity. Black History Month 2022. Whereas the roots of National Black History Month date to 1865 as the beginning of an annual celebration of emancipation. Carter G. Woodson, the father of black history, began Negro History Week on February 1st, 1926. And whereas Negro History Week evolved to National Black Afro-American History Month through Congressional Public Law 99-244, in 1986, and whereas President Bill Clinton described Black history as America's struggle to become a more perfect union, and whereas we acknowledge that Black history is American history, and whereas during the brutality of slavery, hope of emancipation, and reconstruction, through the restrictions of Jim Crow laws and redlining, it took extraordinary courage, faith, and determination for Black Americans to build lives for themselves and their families. And whereas we recognize and celebrate the contributions of Black Americans to our nation's culture, the sciences, the arts, and education, as we remember the outstanding work of General Colin Powell, poet Bell Hooks, and Congressman John Lewis, from which we all benefit. And whereas Black Americans made significant contributions to the strength and character of the city of Ellensburg, we honor Stan Barnett, a man who found beauty in everything and who owned Capitol Avenue Repair for 40 years. Mamie Evans Taylor Robertson, Ellensburg resident from 1950 to 1956, and the pastor of the First African Methodist Episcopal Church on Main Street for 25 years before her death. Bobby Cummings, Central Washington University distinguished professor, who began the process to develop an Africana and Black Studies minor and in 2020 received the Lifetime Achievement Award in Diversity and Equity. And Lenny Price, current Ellensburg resident, singer, composer, jazz saxophonist, music educator, record producer, and performing arts activist, who has graced us with his music on many occasions and in many venues. Now, therefore, the City Council of Ellensburg does hereby proclaim February 2020 as National Black History Month in Ellensburg and honors the courage and contributions of Black Americans throughout this city, state, and nation. Thank you. Madam Mayor, I move uh, Mayor's signature on the proclamation. Second. Motion and second to authorize the mayor's signature on the proclamation. For the discussion. Um, just to recognize that Lenny Price is here. Yes. And uh, I would like to invite Mr. Price to say a few words if you would like. Thank you very much for the kind invitation to say a few words to you. 
I'm extra pleased today to be able to say these words because six months ago I got a kidney transplant thanks to the kindness of the Ellensburg community that I've called my home since 2004. And so to be recognized for doing what God has ordained me to do, which is to be an advocate passionately for music, art, and education, thanks to your generosity and your support, I'm still here and will continue those activities as long as I'm able. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you. Uh, all in favor of the motion. Aye. 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 That motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, and we do have an award this evening or a recognition. Um, will Chief Wade come forward? Step up here with you, please. Good evening, Council. Yeah. I'm privileged this evening to, uh, to present uh, Ms. Paula Haight with her uh, plaque for 30 years of employment with the uh, city of Ellensburg. A variety of different positions, uh, but those that uh, know her uh, best and uh, most recognize her uh, contribute, uh, contribution to the animal shelter and to the animals in the community. So on behalf, it says this plaque is presented to animal control manager Paula Haight for 30 years of service in the city of Ellensburg, October 1st, 1999, correction, 1991, through January 29th, 2022. Uh, and it, it, uh, it's very, uh, I'm very proud to be the one that gets to present this to her. Uh, Paula and I go way back to when uh, we were both in, prior to going just to elementary school. Uh, she was one of her neighbors. Uh, we, we grew up next to each, uh, toward each other. And our, our parents were friends, and so so we've known each other our entire lives. So, congratulations! Thank you. I don't have to say something. Well, uh, it has definitely been an honor. Um, to Paula, could you? Lower, there you go. Thank you. You're saying I'm short. It would, no, I'm <laughs> saying we need to speak directly. Otherwise, we get the yellow card from the guys in the back. And, oh, yeah. yeah. They say I'm short. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, it has definitely been an honor to, um, oh, to uh, be with the city of Ellensburg for as long as I was. Um, definitely, um, most notably, is the manager position for the Ellensburg Animal Shelter. Um, I was in code enforcement for a while. I was records clerk for the police department. I was account clerk one and account clerk two for the finance department, but that all took place in a period of two years. So all of the rest of the years have been at the animal shelter. Um, oftentimes a bumpy ride, um, but it was definitely rewarding. And I just look forward to seeing the place move forward and hopefully get some more staff in there so that everything can continue the way that it has been going and better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for your service. Uh, Council, we have the approval of the agenda before us and, and I will note that um, Landis Hansen would like to read his resignation letter uh, and so if the council would um, amend the agenda, uh, taking item 5M and moving it to 6A to, to allow for that. I can move. Can move right? um, I believe it just takes one council person That's to mm -hmm. uh, support that. But we do need a motion on the uh, agenda. Now we received a new page. Does this have to be acknowledged and we amend it? It's just a Scribner's error for a resolution. It's 20, we're in 2022. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure we were we legal. We move forward with the year. Mayor, move approval of the agenda. Second. 
uh, motion and second to approve the agenda for mm -hmm. clarification. Is that as amended? Uh, not from the not from the mover. No. I'm sorry. Unless we have to. Yeah, it just takes the the, uh, yeah, the motion I'm, of one council agenda. member to move as amended. Second. Um, Okay, motion and second to move the agenda as amended. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Two vote aye. <clears throat> uh, is there any opposed? No. Yes. Yeah. Yes? Yep. So noted. Um, and the consent agenda as amended? So moved. Second. Motion and second to uh, <clears throat> move. The consent agenda is amended. All in favor? Aye. 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 Two will vote aye. That motion carries. Uh, so item 6A is now, um, <clears throat> that is Hansen's uh, resignation letter. Um, Mr. Hansen, I saw you on, on Zoom. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Awesome. And do you just want me to read it? Is that all? Yes. Okay. Awesome. I, uh, so this is this is the uh, my letter of resignation to the city, dear city council. I want to start off by saying how thankful I am um, to the city for ground granting me this opportunity to be a part of the DEI commission. It has been amazing working with the people at, on the commission to make Ellensburg a better place for all. My schedule as of late, however, has not allowed me to make the commission meetings as I need to, and therefore I must step down from my role. I thoroughly believe that the DEI commission has the members it needs to continue to do great things in our community, and this puts me at ease with my decision. I wanna make it clear that this decision um, is made by my own volition and not motivated by any pressure, coercion, or other forms of influence from any individual. Furthermore, I wanna make it clear that I'm not stepping down due to recent controversy surrounding myself. I stand firmly where I've stood since the controversy was brought to my attention, that though my words were regrettable, deeply so, the intentions of my actions were justified. This commission has been under much undue scrutiny since its inception. This scrutiny does not come from the majority of residents in our city, but instead a small minority. This minority having faced a world built for and by people who look, act, and speak like them feel threatened by the presence of institutions built for all. As the adage goes, when you're accustomed to privilege, equality feels like oppression. I strongly believe that this city needs to continue to make our community one where everyone feels welcome no matter any immutable characteristics one might hold. This city, also, this city needs to also understand that our history and present here is not one of peace and tranquility, but instead one of violence and oppression. Violence towards indigenous folks, violence towards black and brown folks, violence towards gay and trans people. And this is not going to be fixed or undone unless we commit to radical change. Change like defunding our police force and using those funds for housing, community programs, and indigenous reparations. Change that doesn't just paint our town with the pride flag or the power fist, but instead materially benefits the communities those symbols represent. Please consider this my letter of resignation. Thank you. Thank you, Landis. I guess we need a motion to accept the resignation. So moved. Second. Motion second to accept the resignation. And I just, before we vote, want to say thank you to Landis for your contributions to the DEI Commission and also for stepping aside to make room for uh, someone else to participate. Mm -hmm. um, and I also want to assure the community that the council does not endorse defunding the police. The, the city recently completed a new public, uh, public safety building remodel and uh, increased the budget for the police uh, because we, and we added officers um, this year. And, and I believe anyway, that providing resources and training to equip our officers to effectively deal with different situations increases the safety for everyone. So um, just, with that explanation, I just before the controversy starts. Um, so I would like to also comment on that. Um, I've I've worked in public safety for thirty five years, and you know by and large the absolute supermajority of the people I work with have been, in law enforcement have been very high quality people, 
whose um, dedication to the community and to uh, the people that they serve, you know, exceeds, um, you know, a lot of times what people would see in typical sort of civilian life. Um, their job is difficult. They have to make snap decisions um, with people who are emotionally upset. Um, we're dealing with an increased number of mental and behavioral health patients. Um, they're not um, necessarily trained or equipped. Um, unless you're a master in social work, you aren't trained or equipped to deal with those things the same way a police officer was. We ask a lot of these people um, very, very, very rarely. Um, it doesn't turn out the way you want it to turn out, but the, by and large, um, you know, I just, I, I have a hard time sort of accepting this concept that, you know, defending the police is going to you know, change things for the better. Madam Mayor, I'd like to comment also and make sure that everybody understands uh, in this community that uh, defunding the police is not uh, on the agenda for the DEI Commission. It's not something that has been discussed. And I don't anticipate having that conversation as long as I'm on the council. Did we vote? No. Nope. Nope. Okay. All in favor of the motion. Aye. 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 I too will vote aye. That motion carries. Okay. We are at uh, the review of the council member assignments and for, for boards and commissions. Um, we have a, I guess it's okay with council. I'd like to just go down the list. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, Mayor, uh, Bruce Tab has said he would stay on the Affordable Housing Commission. The City Finance Committee would be Bruce and David. Uh, Nancy Goodlow on the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Commission. So the Lodging Tax Advisory Committee uh, needs someone, and Adam has expressed interest. Yeah. So I guess I would recommend that um, that. Adam be appointed. And, and then I guess we can verify everything when we get to the end. Um, so well, we could do that one by acclamation right now. We, we, yeah. <laughs> Go Adam. <laughs> <laughs> um, the utility advisory, uh, both Nancy Goodlow and I would like to remain on that. Uh, Kitcom administrative board, uh, Rich has offered since I think he attends that anyway. Um, three more notes here. So uh, the airport advisory committee is actually not, um, the county changed it. So there's not a designated city person, but I would like to remain on that uh, for the time being. COG, uh, Again, Bruce and David have agreed to remain on that. And again, EMS Trauma Care, uh, Rich does that anyway. So he's offering to, to be on that. Um, so the Homelessness Committee, David is willing to step aside. Both Nancy and Bruce are um, interested. Um, I, I, yeah, I'm fine if Nancy wants to step in. I think it makes sense since you do the if all of the other housing stuff, but well, it, I mean, I I'm just saying. I mean, Nancy has been with that was from the time that that started, so there's continuity. Okay. Nancy, I'm, Nancy served on the county's committee uh, years ago. That, I think that's what Bruce is saying. Like the yeah. city then, yeah, both city. Okay. So I'm fine, and and we we can communicate. Okay. okay. Occasionally. Okay, so Nancy Goodlow for for that. Um, Law and Justice Council, again, Nancy Goodlow. Unless there's somebody else that would be really motivated to do that. I'm happy to stay on. Is, is that where they're talking about the mental health? Um, Some. Stuff? I mean, it's usually a agenda item report. It'll be mostly behavioral health and recovery board is a county okay. board. And this may be for a separate discussion, but I think we 
okay. we need to find a way to have you know some indirect or direct um, participation in there, but it's a separate, it's a, that's an actual permission. Right. Um, is there, well, we'll, we'll look for an opening and maybe someone brought the volunteer. Okay. Um, is there anyone else interested in law and justice? And Monica, you didn't. So you gotta jump in. I'm in here. You I'm, want, yeah, okay. I, I'm in the amended one. Oh, I'm, I'm below. Oh, okay. Now. Here we go. Okay. Um. Okay. The mayor does fire and relief uh, pension board. Uh, I am willing to give up the developmental disabilities, but it doesn't look like anyone else has stepped up. Unless any volunteers. Okay. How active is that? Monthly. It's monthly. Okay. Tuesday, Tuesday, tomorrow night. Okay. Um, Mayor does disability. Uh, I have been on the Yakima Basin Fish and Wildlife Recovery Board for 20 years. <laughs> I'd like to keep that. Um, so we do need someone to volunteer for the Solid Waste Advisory Committee. That's a county committee. And when I was on it years ago, we met once a year to do but to recommend a budget, but I don't know how it's run currently. Hold on, you. Okay. Adam. Solid waste. The public transit advisory committee, versus tab, um, the Kittitas County Health Network. Oh, it, so so I'm actually the board chair for that right now. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I got, yeah. It's not the mayor, right? I mean, we don't have to have- Well, it's the way we sort of lined it when it, when it started. Um, I mean, I think the question is ultimately whether the city needs that seat at the table for what the, the network's doing. Or just, just ultimately, you know, I would say no, but for now, I'm going to those meetings anyway, and I'm the board chair this year. Right. Okay, so I'm going to move that for me to Rich. If any, I don't know. yeah, I, I can if um, you think it's necessary. Yeah, I think the thing to recognize, I'm not clear that that there's a formal designation of city representation at that position. It was just. There was um, a lot of discussion when the network was coming together around the paradigm shift in the delivery of healthcare, and it was tied to the community health improvement plan. Um, and I had been engaged in that and felt like it was important for the city to, to be part of that. The network has now kind of evolved in, in a different way, I would suggest. And I'm not, I'm, that's why I'm suggesting I'm not sure. I mean, if you're, the chair, that's that's great, but ultimately, to your point, I don't know that we need a designated person there. I don't think we. I don't think we necessarily do. I think that it's moved past that. Yeah. Richard, you could speak into your microphone more. That would help. help. I don't think we do. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move that to Rich. Uh, the checkerboard partnership. I have been attending, and I am willing to continue to do that and not be the alternate, but be the primary. Mm -hmm. uh, the Steer I-90 Coalition, Rich, that you've been attending those? Yes. And um, Bruce, well, does the Kittitas County, yeah. you're appointed to the bowling alley thing, is that and, and Adam, well, Adam and I are just going to go down there like one night and, and roll a couple frames and be done with it. Okay. Because it hasn't met, right? Yeah, it hasn't met. Okay. Uh, the, the, yeah. I mean, if, if Adam wants to. It's it's tied in pretty closely to, to what Centerfuse is working on. So. I, well, yeah, it's all. Yeah. It's, it's another story. I, I mean, if Adam, Adam and I have had a conversation, if he would like to be our designee, that would be fine. Okay. Uh, the committee has not met the idea behind it. 
was that they were going to solicit RFPs and then there was going to be a committee that came together to review those RFPs. There, there's been one proposed one incomplete proposal that I believe the county has received um, and the committee has never met. Okay. Other than that, so yeah, enough. there's a there was a broadband action team too that I was representing the city on that hasn't yeah. has met once. Yeah. So yeah. I, it's I didn't add this to the list, but probably not going to meet again. Yeah, probably not. Okay. But if it does, Adam's going to be our person for the bowling alley. Yes. Um, okay, so chamber, there was an, okay. The Chamber of Commerce Legislative Committee, that's, that's lunch, um, that's once a month. Um, Bruce, do you still want to attend? Yeah, that's fine. And Monica can be an alternate. Yeah. And I'll give it up. Okay. And Monica, just, I mean, what was occurring was Nancy and I actually were just swapping off. Oh, okay. So it wasn't. I'm, okay. You guys had the plan. Yeah, the system. Oh, well, I'm fine. Kind of, but we were but both, I mean, off we were both there today. Yeah, yeah. So, so we were right we, here swapping off who was the primary and who was the alternate. So, yeah, so you can be, we'll, we'll work it out. We'll communicate. Yes, we can both go out. Okay, so um, actually on the the central uh, EOD, the, so the student body, um, the president has reached out to me, Bruce. Um, of the BOD? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I agreed to meet. Um, so that, that's all that was. Um, yeah. I mean, we, we never had a former affiliation. Um, it depended on who the president was and how, how that occurred. They would reach out to the mayor. Um, and then ultimately we would, I would go, we would either sit down and have conversations or occasionally um, attend an entire board meeting or present to the BOD at one of their regular meetings. So if it's okay, I, oh, yeah. I will take that as mayor. Um, yep. Options. Uh, business development. Uh, arts commission. Arts commission. Skip arts. Oh, I skipped arts commission. Arts commission. Uh, we're not going to let Monica do it. So um, Nancy and David have both expressed interest. Either way, I, I'm giving up one, so I have some okay. some availability. But I'm happy to let you do it if you'd like. You've got quite have, a bit, Nancy. Yeah. You've got quite a bit. Yeah, I agree. I also have landmarks and design, which if anyone really wants to tackle that, I'd be willing to uh, swap. But uh, I'm also happy to continue. Why don't you do the arts commission? Okay, I'll do arts. Okay. David for arts. Uh, the business development authority. Um, Rich has been doing that. Um, I'm willing to continue, although apparently I haven't been answering their questions, but I will do better. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I, I would like an experienced council person in that role, if, if that's okay, Monica. That's fine. Okay. I'll just um, the, the Environmental Commission, I am willing to give up if Adam would like to take that. And landmarks and design. If anyone wants to turn, I'm happy to spot that. Is there any interest, or you want to let David? Well, continue? so I think the conversation um, is because of the relationship that, that Monica has with Gallery One, um, but a I mean, to me, the Arts Commission and the Lodging Tux are a direct conflict or potential conflict. Um, it, it does, I know that there has been, there have been times when Gallery One has applied for money through the, through the um, grant program. But it seems to me that if David's willing to give it up and that's an area I know of interest, it would not present the same conflict 
that those other two would. Other, just for the record, other members of the Arts of the Landmarks and Design Commission have also applied for funding, but not yeah. limited to gallery one. And it is a liaison position, not a voting yeah. member position. Right, right. So that's right. Observe and stay out of the way. Are, are we agreed that Monica could take that? Absolutely. You want that? Mm, well, I wasn't sure that was an option. I feel like if that's on the table, then for the same reason, I mean, the Arts Commission, the liaison position, also not a voting member. It is more directly involved in the, 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 the day job. Also owns a building in When does landmarks meet? It is uh, usually the Tuesday following the council meetings, uh, first and third as needed. Not the it's 5.45, not 5.15. Again, I would just go back. I mean, there are decisions the Arts Commission makes that comes in front of council where you would still, as a liaison, be asked to vote on, on decisions. You'd either have to recuse yourself on a fairly consistent basis with what was occurring with those recommendations. Landmarks and design, one, it's a liaison position, and much of their work is done through um, the public public hearing. Um, right? So, so, so to, I, I, again, I mean, I think it's a very different sort of creature than potentially lodge and tax and, and, and rights commission given your current role. There's certainly no voting role for the council member on landmarks and, very, and design. And very rarely, I mean, other than approving the overall, um, the small grants program, the community grants program, um, it's really pretty much the only time that we would vote on a recommendation of expenditure okay. for landmarks and design. Okay. You're good I, I was just because I was looking up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's getting. Yes, I know. Then, <laughs> exactly. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, okay. They have a new chair uh, just now, so the staff support's been really good. So I think you'll fall right in. Get right up. Okay. So we need someone for the library board, and Monica and David have expressed interest. That was a, I guess when I was looking at swapping out, you know, I had Arts Commission listed, Library Board as an alternate to that. So I'm happy with the Arts Commission. So if someone else wants library, I mean, it's good. Uh, actually, since I gave up environmental, I could do library. Which is where I started way back. Um, and Parks, Parks and Recreation Commission, both um, Monica and Adam have expressed interest. Yeah, if, if you would like to say that one. Yeah, we talked about it earlier. Okay, okay. Uh, Planning Commission. I've actually got that right now. I'm happy to say uh, Thursday and that usually works, works out okay. Okay, so- I don't need to have it if somebody else wants it. I think we need to be paying pretty close attention. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. Plan. Yeah. Parks is going to do whatever they want anyway. <laughs> um, Senior Citizen Advisory Commission, we need the volunteer. I don't know when it meets. I think they moved to a quarterly meeting. I'll do it. Okay. I can do that. Quarterly's okay. Quarterly's good. <laughs> hey, so just a, a quick go back. The Steer I-90 coalition, just so you guys understand, or so everybody in the council understands, it's effectively a project from Eastern East to Cleellum, a uh, widening project, um, you know, with an economic development component up there. And, you know, probably indirectly, to some extent, an economic um, development piece down here. Um, I don't have any allegiance to it. So if anybody wants a little bit of economic development, they can have that one. It's a Thursday afternoon virtual meeting or once a month. I used to new guy, so I got it. I'll stick with it. I, 
think you're stuck with it. <laughs> did I get senior citizen or did Bruce edge me out there? Um, either one. Well, I was just counting. Bruce has my AARP card you this card. year. <laughs> 55. <laughs> there hasn't been in the past, but it, it might be. <laughs> Looks old. All right. um, there's an age restriction. Oh, I'm eligible. Oh, no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I'll do it. I'm feeling a little light. There's not an age restriction. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, and I mean, actually, in terms of revisiting, it might be something at some point that we wouldn't, because I mean, we, I think that's an artifact of when we had a senior senate citizen center as opposed to an adult activity center. Yes. Because I mean, functionally, that's the group that's doing the advisory for the activities there. Yeah, when we redid the stuff, we sort of renamed that. Anyway, so Monica's good. Yeah, so I think we're putting Monica in. Um, so I will, I will just say I'm, I'm a little light. I'm happy where I am, but if anyone who has eight or nine assignments wants to shed one, I'd be <laughs> willing to take one in fairness. But otherwise, I'm good. About steer I ninety. <laughs> steer, I drove right into that, didn't I? Felt like felt like a very public <laughs> offering. I think it slid off the road. Okay, throw me in. I'll I'll take a run at him. Sure. I think we hit them all here. So, do we have everything? I think we do. Okay. Um, My papers all and I think that like we don't need to vote on that. That's all just in agreement, right? Yeah. So our next item is our board and commission appointments. <clears throat> so. Um, we had four applicants for the DEI commission and um, we have member Goodlow, the chair of that commission and uh, uh, team um, interviewed all four and recommended uh, Teresa Francis Devine and Mara Colazzo. Um, So that my recommendation would would be to um, appoint uh, Teresa and Myra uh, to the DEI commission. Is it so moved? So moved? Yeah. So uh, well, moved. well, it's, it's a full council vote now under the new rules. Yeah. Okay. So. So, so motion it's not and second. Recommends, it's, it's everybody just. So you can still recommend, but it's a council. You can make a motion. I'll yes. make the motion if you need a motion. Yeah. Okay. okay. I will move that the council accept the recommendation to appoint Teresa Devine and uh, Myra Colazzo to the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Commission. Second. Okay. Motion and second to, to make the said appointments. Uh, is there any further discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. To a vote, I thank you, Madam Mayor. I make a comment on. That. I just wanted people to um, to know that um, the uh, interviews went really well, uh, and I like that as part of the process. Uh, I worked with Nicole, our staff <coughs> person, as well as uh, the vice chair of the DEI commission, and we did those interviews, and they. Could, I thought it was a really good process. I know we're thinking about. It changing the process. So just want to put a word in as well. Thank you. Uh, next on our agenda is an update of the animal control and shelter services. Uh, and this is an information only report. Good evening, Council. I'm Ken Wade, Chief of the Ellsberg Police Department. And I appreciate it. I'll take just a moment of your time this evening to update you on where we're at with our Ellensburg Animal Shelter. I'm here tonight to give an update on the, the services which were temporarily interrupted due to a lack of personnel to care for the animals. Uh, beginning in mid-December and over approximately two to three weeks after that, 
the police department animal control and shelter experienced uh, the loss of three of our five employees uh, two to retirement which we recognized and, and celebrated one and then also a our part-time shelter aid left for full-time employment with the uh, elford school district so we, we wish them all well on their next chapter uh, but the challenges that it brought to the department losing uh, 60 percent of our staff so suddenly uh, forced us to uh, take some emergency steps to ensure the uh, safe care and management of the animals. And in order to do that, I directed staff to limit the animals coming into the shelter uh, to those that needed to come in under quarantine or those that our uh, patrol officers had a chance to evaluate and make a determination that the animals needed to be sheltered. So we still brought them in. Uh, what we did uh, try to discourage was the owner give ups, at least during this short period of time. Uh, until we could get more staff uh, on it so we could care for those animals also. Uh, patrol officers and the, the animal control interim manager, uh, Heidi Monson, continued handling all animal complaints. So those that are called into KITCOM and the officers were dispatched to, that service went on uninterrupted. We also recognized that we were going to have a need for a contingency plan should we have a uh, a COVID-19 uh, impact to our shelter. And so uh, Captain Weed reached out to the Yakima Humane Society to make touch bases with them to see if they could backfill or help us out if that was to occur. Uh, we also learned shortly after reducing services to the community that there was information on a uh, popular social media website that was providing false and misleading uh, information about our shelter. Some of the information that was being provided was stating that our shelter was going to be closing the following Friday and that we were going to euthanize all the animals. Uh, uh, very rarely will you ever see a response from me to Facebook or any of those others because I, I'm not very uh, fluent in that language. Uh, but I did respond to that. that that's absolutely uh, not the case. Never have it ever been the case. Uh, in January 12th, I met with Gittitas County Friends of Animals and, and they're represented here today also. Uh, we discussed the shelter situation and my plans to assess the community's needs uh, for the current shelter. Representatives from the Friends of Animals agreed to be a resource for the department and we're working uh, as we work on our uh, assessment. Uh, once completed our citizen survey, we provided a copy to Friends of Animals for their review and their recommendations before we move that out to the public. Uh, we also have met with the Daily Record and with the uh, Kidata for the the uh, Central Washington University uh, television station. We provided both of them tours of the shelter and uh, they were also going to write stories about it. February 1st, uh, our interim shelter manager Monson advised that she felt we could reopen to full operations. And beginning today, uh, we are back open by appointment only and we're closely monitoring our animal intake. Uh, we're still short on staff. We were able to hire one part-time shelter aid. We made an offer to another one. Uh, she initially accepted it and then uh, turned it down uh, the day she was supposed to return to work, to report to work, which had been kind of a, a theme that we've been seeing and trying to fill those positions. Um, and due to the staffing challenges and as noted in our uh, city's comprehensive plan, uh, we're doing an assessment of the needs, uh, both for the, uh, services that the shelter provides and for the staffing. We'll need that information before we can look you know, towards moving ahead with hiring more permanent long-time positions. Um, we're also recognized that there's uh, the current services and the business model used by our animal shelter may be outdated or not current uh, industry or municipal government standards. So we're taking a look at that. We're reaching out to other governmental entities and to other uh, sheltering services and, and animal control services throughout Eastern and Central Washington to see what else is out there. And uh, our shelter um, has, has done a, a wonderful job in meeting the needs of the community, uh, but it has basically been uh, the same business model since uh, its inception in 1974. There's been one exception where uh, under Paula's uh, tutelage, she began uh, working with animal shelter services, uh, adoption services out of Western Washington to where those animals that were coming in were uh, cared for and then uh, shipped out 
to uh, Western Washington where they went out for adopt adoption. Uh, adoption. Uh, it was very timely and, uh, and served a great purpose because it helped us reduce our euthanasia rate. Uh, so, but we're taking a look at, at all of the different services that are out there. And then at some point, uh, once we have that information gathered and, and collected, then we will report to council uh, with a recommendation. Are there any questions? Questions for Chief Yeah, I just have something real quick to say. Sure. So I'm going to quote apparently Churchill, Truman, Pope John Paul, and Doist Ayevsky, who basically said that how we treat our animals is the measure of society. So I looked that up on the internet. <laughs> no, but I'm I'm very passionate about this. I mean, I know it probably I know this is an emotional thing for people, you know, for some people, but um, you know, and I recognize that we have limited resources, but this is important. And, and our uh, focus <laughs> moving forward is we're looking at animal care, uh, education to pet owners, and the improved services and, and adoption opportunities for the public. There's a lot of stuff out there in the animal care uh, world, and uh, we just want to get a feel for what our community wants and needs and, and what we can do for that. I, and I actually would just kind of second that. I, I appreciate it. I actually went out and took the survey. I, I liked um, and appreciated the breadth of the scope. Um, we may not be able to invest in all of those, but I think it helps to identify gaps in the, that are out there in terms of um, the care and sheltering of animals um, and what role the city might play in that. And I think also reaching out to other communities to see what they're doing within their shelters relative to the community assessment that they're doing uh, is a really positive step for us. So thank you. Thank you. And thank you again, Paula. Yeah. Nothing else? Thank you. Thank you. Um, next on our agenda is an update on the implementation of the behavioral health court for Kittitas County screening process for defensive Good evening, Madam Mayor, Council Members, Madam City Manager. My name is Aaron Ryman. I'm the Assistant City Attorney and Prosecutor for the City. I'm here to talk about the establishment of a behavioral health court in Kittitas County. A behavioral health court is a therapeutic or treatment court which uses a holistic approach to treat the targeted issue. Our behavioral health court will be a two track program treating substance use disorders and also mental health disorders. The goal is to improve stability in the lives of the defendants who get accepted to the program. By addressing the substance use disorder or mental health disorder, and also by addressing education, employment, housing, childcare and financial issues. The length of each case will vary and may be dynamic depending on how the case proceeds, but each case will last at least 12 months. Defendants accepted into the program will make commitments and promises that will be tracked weekly at first, but then longer as success builds. A successful case will result in the case being dismissed, whereas an unsuccessful case will likely result in a finding of guilt. For the past five months, local stakeholders from the mental health and substance use treatment communities, as well as those uh, people who interact with the lower and upper district courts, have been meeting first to work through the application process to secure the state grant funding for the program, uh, but then more recently to create the framework for the process itself. Although the grant funding was the trigger that sparked the creation of this program, um, we learned when discussing the framework that the funding was not needed to start it. All of the pieces and partners are already in place. However, however funding will likely be used for training, for transportation, for medical services, for housing, for other services at the discretion of the team and it may also be used to supplement the salary of one of the court clerk employees who has been identified to be the compliance specialist 
and she'll essentially be the the hub around which uh, everything circulates. All the defendants will check in with her, and other referrals will go through her. We expect to start taking requests next week. We're excited to see if this new opportunity will make lasting changes uh, for some people who could use it. And we hope that this helps to stop the cycle of crime that we see with individuals bat battling through substance use and mental health disorders in our community. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to try to address those. Questions? So this is a 12 month scope that we're watching the individuals um, offering them help and assistance. Is there any kind of a program for after that? Uh, essentially, I ended up losing my brother to alcoholism. And the main course to that that I came with was that there was no, he just got right back into the same rhythm. Every single time there was no longevity to the change. Is there anything with this that'll help with that longevity change? Well, this will be at least 12 months and it could be longer, but in, in district court, uh, we generally have jurisdiction over a case for two years. For domestic violence cases, that jurisdiction can go up to five years, but that's it. Um, so once a case, cases can be extended with um, certain waivers. Um, but what we hope is that the person who goes to the program would get, uh, again, a holistic approach here from um, to address the mental health or substance use, other things that might be triggering um, the decision making to, to address those issues. Um, once it's over, though, once a person succeeds in the program and the charges would be dismissed, then there wouldn't be any more court ordered tracking uh, of that case anymore. Um, but hopefully that person through uh, the networks built in the program would have a, a support network that he or she could turn to, to, to build off those successes. So, so I have some things to add. Um, first of all, you know, very much appreciate the efforts. Um, <clears throat> you know, you talk about the criminal justice system and mental and behavioral health, but also linked into that is probably housing and it's probably accessing the most expensive component of our healthcare system, which is 911 and the emergency room. And <clears throat> that cycle that's going through is costing our community huge amounts of money. And it is probably uh, at least in, in some part due, uh, responsible for the fact that uh, we were able to pass the one tenth of 1% for mental and behavioral health services in this community, because we have to break that cycle. What we're doing isn't working. What we're doing is leading people to jail, to the emergency department, and a very low quality of life, and sometimes early death. And so programs like this, I think, all piece together, and our community is just beginning to generate, I think, you know, focused momentum so that we can start to, you know, break that cycle and get, you know, some of these people out of that cycle. And just, just strictly, if you take away the human part of it, you know, the economic incentive to do this is immense. You break that cycle. I don't know what you guys know if an emergency room visit averages $3,200. An ambulance bill starts off at $700. And all of those bills eventually get either absorbed by the community or paid by somebody and it ends up costing us. So there's a lot of uh, money at play here to, you know, for programs like this, if, if that, that program is successful, it actually saves the community money, it doesn't cost anything. Um, just a couple things. Um, one, I think it's important for the community and council to recognize, um, Adam, you used the word new opportunity. It's a new opportunity only for us. Correct. Um, therapeutic courts have been successful in innumerable counties throughout the state. Um, and there are models of success um, that I'm sure we're patterning ourselves um, over or um, patterning ourselves after. Um, I also just, again, I wanna commend everybody that's been involved with this. Uh, this has been an ongoing conversation actually in the community, but all you need to do is, is think about folks with substance abuse or behavioral health issues in, who's the only path be prior to this would be to go to jail. Um, and then your sheriffs are tasked with addressing behavioral health issues 
in the jail, and to Adam's point, with minimal support than when that person emerges from whatever the sentence has been. To be able to offer an incentive to an individual to seek the support that they need to be able to break that cycle is huge. Um, and, and I think to, to Rich's point, there's an economic benefit, but the social benefit and, and, and really the investment that it shows we're willing to make in people is um, um, incredibly appreciated and, and vitally important to the health of, of not just the individuals in the therapeutic court, um, but for this community. And so I, I really do want to thank you and appreciate the, uh, the, the investment of everyone that got us to the point where we're, we're initiating this. Thank you. My, my question is more basic. So how does this differ from the drug court that yeah. we have had for, I mean, I, I used to get invitations regularly to go to the drug court graduation ceremonies. I'm not supposed to talk about that here. Okay. <laughs> not supposed to talk about that here. So, uh, so drug court is, uh, uh, it's a function of the superior court uh, and it focuses just on uh, drug, uh, uh, drug issues. Um, so this is going to be in lower district and upper district court, which are the courts that handle misdemeanors and gross misdemeanors. Uh, we do have some exclusion, exclusionary criteria, uh, some of which would be uh, somebody who has a con more than four uh, felony convictions. If the, if the charge that's being addressed is a, a domestic violence charge uh, and others that I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but it is very similar, and that's when we were talking about developing this. Uh, this is a two-track court also. One is for substance abuse disorder. One is for mental health disorders. And we know that sometimes they'll inter intertwine. Um, but the, the, the goal here is one week to do substance abuse cases, and then the next week to do mental health. Alternate them um, every week, except for those months that have uh, five so we do this every Thursday, every Thursday. Uh, so the fifth Thursday of the month, when there is a fifth Thursday, that'll be an administrative uh, meeting, uh, but we'll alternate. Um, but again, I think most people who were associated with creating this did have the drug court as kind of the model that they were framing this around. Uh, so it won't be too different, um, but there'll be some nuances. Okay. Thank you. That was my that was my question. I've attended several of the drug court uh, ceremonies, and I think the outcomes are what we're looking for, similar outcomes. But it's, it won't replace it. It's a something that complements it. Exactly, say. exactly right. I have a question. Um, what is that? What's the age range that you anticipate being mostly involved with here in Ellensburg with this, this court? You know, we didn't study that. Um, I think it would uh, it would vary because um, you know, the population varies uh, for people who might have substance uh, use disorders or mental health disorders. Um, I know that, or I suspect that each one of us who are a part of putting this together probably have some people in mind already, uh, um, some you know, defendants who are already in a system that we think, oh, this would be a good a good opportunity for this person. Um, and, you know, I guess in my mind, I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, people who, their cases uh, involving people probably in their thirties, um, but, but I know this is going to you know, broadly impact, um, you know, have a broad range of, uh, uh, broad impact on a range of people. What about juveniles, do you anticipate? So juvenile court uh, is handled by the county, and that's uh, a different court. So that's not part of the lower or upper district court. Okay. That's not part of our, our courtroom, so that won't be addressed. Okay, I think further for Aaron. Thank you for bringing this forward. Thank you. And again, just informational, no. Um, so, Next is citizen comment on non agended issues. Um, and I worked with the city manager to um, take the opportunity to uh, respond to Jennifer Lubansky's uh, criticism of, um, of this process and also Nick Zito in, the, in his letter to the editor. I, I think that our saying the council cannot take action uh, 
pursuant to a citizen comment has left us silent and left folks with the impression that nothing ever happened to that comment when that is, you know, always stuff happens. The staff always makes contact with the person giving the contact, giving the, um, the comment and resolves that issue if they can. Um, so then we, we have a couple of options pursuant to citizen comment. We can ask for the item to be placed on an agenda so that we can talk about it, uh, or we can refer the item to staff just so that there isn't the perception that someone stands up and says something and we just all stone face sit here and don't respond. Um, so, so given that, uh, it is time for public comment and uh, you're still limited to three minutes and uh, speakers are cautioned not to engage in conduct that disrupts or disturbs or otherwise impedes the orderly conduct of the council meeting. And it's not election season, so um, I won't read that. So again, council rules provide that no action will be taken by the council at the meeting when it's first introduced. And that is because it's not been advertised. So, uh, you know, we need to give people notice if we're going to take action on an item. And um, if you stand up here and say, you need to fix this pothole, and we say, okay, we're going to reallocate money to fix the pothole, we take an action without citizens um, being able to come and say, no, that's not how I want my money to be spent. So um, I have Daria Wheeler. Um, okay, so um, this uh, Pearl Street closure was on the agenda, but on the study session, not on the regular agenda. So we, we can take this comment, right? Yeah, okay. Daria, if you so. Helping me time. Thank you. Can you, hear, can you hear me? Yes. My name is Daria Wheeler. My home address is 131 Fieldstone Court in Ellensburg. I'm here to discuss the street closure <clears throat> with regard to our business, Ellensburg Pet Center at 412 North Pearl Street, which is directly in the center of the um, item being discussed. Um, on a personal basis, the biggest concern for us is front access. Um, we, many of the items that we sell are bulky, heavy, fragile, and sensitive, they're live animals. This would include, um, taking that away would include eliminating curbside pickup and severely inhibit carry out. Um, and these factors alone would stand to have a very negative impact on our business. The um, some of the things being discussed that would, um, for the street closure, have to do with items that are already um, occurring in Ellensburg. Some of the ones that were mentioned in the study were Dachshunds on Parade, Jazz in the Valley, the St. Patty Run, Moments to Remember, Streets of Bethlehem, um, Halloween, which wasn't mentioned, Buskers in the Burr. These um, events are all already occurring without any street closure. And so it seems like, um, a big consideration for this is um, aesthetics. How can we make these more beautiful so that they might be, we might be able to attract more of an audience to them. And I think Unity Park is a really good way to start there. They, um, as uh, I believe Bruce Tab said, that parking didn't exist just a few years ago. And I think we could probably all learn to live without it. <laughs> So I don't see that as a big concern, um, but I think it would be nice to have a really nice community gathering space um, in the heart of downtown. And one of the things that I never have heard mentioned, excuse me, <clears throat> is a permanent partial closure. Um, why does it need to be the whole street? By the time we take down the existing elements of the parking lot as it, exists, as it stands now um, and pop, excuse me, 
and also possibly include the parking that's directly in front of the um, Wells Fargo building and the Rotary Pavilion. There's about 10 spaces. Um, that should give us a very large, good sized space to accommodate any event that I can possibly, possibly think of. So um, some of these things, and I apologize because I couldn't hear all of you speak. So if I'm repeating things, um, but some of the big concerns of course, as a store owner are um, emergency response time, homeless and crime control, vandalism control, Daria, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, that's three minutes. That that was three minutes. Oh, okay. so um, All right. well, if um, you have written comments and would like to submit them to the um, city manager, she will provide them to us so we can hear the okay. the rest of what you yeah, it's all pretty would, specific. would like to say. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Can I ask a clarifying question? When you, Daria, when you said um, parking adjacent, you mean just so so the. When I said what I'm trying. So the, in your partial um, plan, so partial closure, it would just be the parking spot spots that are immediately adjacent to the park. Is, is that what you mean? Exactly. And then the through would, traffic would continue and the parking on the other side. Right, would, it would be would, the parking spaces from where the driveway is to, I don't know directions, right. but to um, Fort Street. Yeah, so the alley to around to the- I don't know the about driveway. the alley. I was just questioning that whether those spaces in the alley are um, yeah. going to be considered as part of Unity Park. I don't know, so. We've yet to see the design too. So, <laughs> exactly. so okay. Thank, Thank you. you. That's a that's an interesting idea. Uh, Dolores Gonzalez. Dolores Gonzalez, four zero seven South Sprague Street here in Ellensburg. As the shelter services are being researched, I want to keep this in mind. Ellensburg Animal Control and Animal Shelter Services are essential to the public safety of the Ellensburg community. It is so important to our community that in 2007, a citizens committee included both as part of the three tenths of 1% sales tax that we use to support criminal justice work in Kittitas County. We voted to increase our taxes. That is how important our criminal justice system is in our community. We voted to increase our taxes. The people voted to increase animal control and animal shelter staffing by increasing our sales tax to do it. Ellensburg wanted the boots on the ground. This sales tax specifically provided the Ellensburg Police Department with six officers and provided Ellensburg Animal Control, which is part of the Ellensburg Police Department with an additional 1.5 staffing that included the increase in animal control officers and shelter aid positions. Even Upper County added a 0.5 animal control officer position which allowed Cleallum Roslyn to initiate an animal control program. Staff increases are a necessity if public safety is to keep pace with growth. According to American Pet Products Association 2021 and 2022 National Pet Owner Survey, 70% of American households have a pet. Based on this survey, it is, a safe, it is safe to say that at least two thirds of Ellensburg residents are pet owners. The Ellensburg Police Department knows the importance of positive interactions with the community by the fairly new Facebook pet hashtag campaign of hashtag Mutt Monday and hashtag Feline Fridays. The page shows officers and community members with their pets. They realize pets are important to the residents of Ellensburg and are an easy way of positively interacting with the public and not just enforcing laws. When animal laws are enforced, it provides another opportunity for keeping the public safe. According to www.sheriffs.org, animal abuse is often a predictor and indicator of crime. Substantial research establishes the link between animal cruelty and other criminal behaviors, such as domestic violence, child abuse, elder abuse, homicide, sexual assault, drug weapons violations, and terrorism. Our highly trained and skilled animal control officers are poised to help identify these and other crimes in our neighborhoods. 
the public voted for boots on the ground to improve our community safety. Let's honor voters by keeping animal control and the animal shelter with the Ellensburg Police Department. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to speak on non-agenda items? Yes, ma'am. My name is Teresa Plu. I live at 140 Woodhouse Loop. Um, uh, miscellaneous, I just wanna say thank you to the city council. I see seven city council members here. Maybe you need to expand to nine because when I see all of your duties, it looks like a lot, <laughs> a lot. Um, just thank you. Um, second thing is the, um, the school board has a clock up on a Zoom thing that lets people know at the podium and when they're zooming in how many minutes they have left, it's got seconds on it. Maybe you could incorporate that up there, it would be great. Um, you know, a lot of things have been stirring in this community um, for the last two years. That perception from the public that people come and they speak and then they don't hear back and then they don't see, see that they've had any impact. I'm, I'm really encouraged to see you responding to that because that's going to increase um people taking up their civic duty and becoming involved in their government and helping you with a heavy load of carrying this town um let's see also um law and order is important in our community we know that i've lived in rural communities quite a bit across the state there i've had situations where i've been a single well i wasn't a single mother my my husband was at work and somebody came to my door and claimed to be a census worker after dark in Stevens County. And that was about the time that they were um, talking about um, making, making people go in for firearms training for two days straight. And I was a nursing mother of two children at the time. And that would have made me an instant felon having a firearm there when my husband was at work to protect me. That person was not a census worker. It was terrifying to me. So the thought of that we would have people representing our city on commissions, I urge you to screen your applicants carefully because we don't want people on there that are, that are perceived as being defunding police because we need that law and order and we can all come together. It's very divisive when that occurs because we're gonna work together. We're gonna work together. And I'm just really encouraged with everything I heard here. Um, also, I guess that's about it. Just try to get policy procedure in place for interviewing applicants so that you know you guys are learning. And I, I, I respect that process. And thank you for everything that you do. Thank you. Thank you. And that is uh, part of our process. We, we have discussed uh, revising our process. So uh, is there anyone else who would like to speak? Mr. Kelleher. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Pat Kelleher, 6530 Wilson Creek Road. <clears throat> I believe this is the eighth time uh, appearing before the council concerning public safety on Cora Street. Thank you for allowing me the time to put my concern on the record. In December of 2019, city staff accepted a traffic impact analysis supplemental memorandum that addressed an access alternative to provide a single access to both schools using Cora Street via 15th. The city council or the city of Ellensburg approved this single access option and eliminated developmental code requirements to improve additional access to the schools through Helena Street. Public safety along Cora is now a daily concern. For a half a century, Mount Stewart operated daily with zero impact to the adjacent neighborhood or Cora Street using only the parking lot behind the existing school. Today, that parking lot is both larger and improved. The city of Ellensburg should restore public safety in the community 
and restrict Mount Stewart traffic to the existing parking lot that served the community for over 55 years without controversy. Thank you. Thank you. And again, staff has been working very hard to resolve the Cora Street traffic issues. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Okay. So our next item is a public hearing uh, to adopt the resolution amending the city's six year transportation improvement plan for 2022 to 2027, revising a grant funded project and adding new projects. Um, and for the new uh, council members, um, public hearings are much more formal and require a script and a, a certain process. So we can't just jump in and comment uh, at any time. So um, the purpose of this legislative hearing is for the city council to consider a resolution adopting amendments to the city's six year transportation improvement plan for 2022 to 2027. The public hearing is now open. I ask for your cooperation in the following procedure. Everyone will be given an opportunity to be heard. The clerk will be making a recording of the proceedings. If you wish to participate in the hearing, you must raise your virtual hand on the Zoom meeting screen or press star nine if you are connected by telephone only and wait until I have recognized your name, uh, your request and you have been unmuted. You should then begin by stating your name and address and indicate whether you are speaking for yourself individually or as a spokesperson for a certain group or both. Speak slowly and clearly. Only one person will be allowed to speak at a time. Your testimony must only address the matter under consideration in this hearing. Any questions of staff are to be directed through the council. Each person will have an opportunity to address the council for an initial period not to exceed five minutes. If more time is needed, it will be made available after everyone has had an opportunity to speak. Before we hear from the audience, is there a staff report to be presented? Yes, uh, good evening, Mayor and Council, Derek Mayo, City Engineer. In June of last year, Council approved our 2022 through 2027 six-year transportation improvement plan that was then submitted to the state. The re resolution before you tonight is to amend the plan to reflect a new grant funding and to add two additional projects. Um, and as I said, amendments can be submitted to the state at any time. So the first revision is for the uh, brick road improvements project, which is uh, from Radio Road north to the city limits um, to move this project as a future unfunded project in the plan to a project uh, with secured funds uh, based on staff securing uh, recently securing a federal surface transportation block grants. The total project cost is $1,635,000 with the grant covering 80% and a local match of 20%. These improvements include the extension of curb gutter sidewalks, illumination, storm drainage, and repaving uh, brick road through the limits of the projects. The second revision, as I said, is for uh, two projects to be added to the, to the six year plan. And those are the Helena Avenue improvements and extension from Water Street to Dry Creek Road. And the second is the Cora Street extension from the Palooza Cascades Trail to Bender Road. Both of these projects are I added to the end of the six year plan as potential unfunded projects, but adding these projects to the plan better position them for grant funds as they become available. And they are desired connections that support recent and proposed development within the immediate vicinity. So with that staff recommends council adopt the resolution amending the 2022 through 2027 six year transportation improvement plan. And staff also recommends council authorize the mayor and staff to execute any and all grants paperwork associated with the brick road bridge a brick road project. Thank you. The floor is open to testimony from the public. Each person will have an opportunity to address the council for an initial period, not to exceed five minutes. If more time is needed, it will be made available after everyone has had an opportunity to speak. Is there anyone who would like to speak to this issue? Mr. Kelleher. Pat Kelleher, 6530 Wilson Creek Road. 
uh, an interest, interesting addition to the uh, six-year transportation plan of the uh, Cora Street and Helena additions. And here's an example of no developer would have been allowed to develop the Weiniger property without doing the Helena Street improvements. Uh, the city of Ellensburg has also shirked their responsibility. They, they did a well in that area and never completed their half street improvement, which is a requirement of, of the development. So here we let certain quote unquote developers shirk their responsibilities. And then we go to other people's money to fund these things in the future. Now, this is just a placeholder and maybe we have uh, money rain from the sky uh, to fund these things and we can pick it up when the core issue here is these two projects that are added should have been completed by the developer. And it's, it's interesting that you can just throw this into your six year transportation plan. There's no development planned. The developments happen. The cows have left the pen. We have a safety concern. And now, well, if we get some money, maybe we'll address it. And it's just, it's sloppy planning. It's uh, giving into certain quote unquote, favored developers not to do their share. Because if an apartment complex had gone on the Weidegger's property, oh, Helena would have been extended. There's no question about that. So if you're giving the passes out, just make sure it's equitable. And so the developers can play the same card and avoid the legitimate mitigation to a development. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else who would like to speak to this issue? Does the staff have anything to add? Are there any persons in the audience who would like to add non-repetitive information? And I don't see anyone with their hand raised on Zoom. So council, do you have any questions of the staff or public? Just questions, no comments. Seeing no one. Uh, the public testimony portion of this hearing is now closed. The council may now begin its discussion and deliberation of this matter. Madam Mayor, I move resolution 2022-03. Second. Motion and second for resolution 2022-03. Uh, is there discussion? Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Madam Mayor, I move the council authorize the city manager and public works staff to take uh, actions uh, pursuant to the improvement of Brick Road. For a second. Second. Mo motion and second uh, to authorize mm -hmm. the mayor and staff to execute any and all necessary grant paperwork okay. associated with the Brick Road Improvement Project. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I too will vote aye. That motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Um, we are at item 11A on page 136, uh, the Ellensburg Downtown Association Agreement for Professional Services. Thank you, um, Madam Mayor and Council. Heidi Barron Sternaway, City Manager. And you have before you a proposed two-year agreement, a professional services agreement with our with the Ellensburg Downtown Association. 
And I would actually like to invite um, Brenda DeVoe. I'll give a little bit of background and Brenda's gonna, um, she is our new executive director for the Ellensburg Downtown Association. And she'll talk a little bit about the scope of work. And before I get to her, um, I would mention, um, this is a change in the base agreement um, since the um, EDA's inception in 2000, 2004. Our base um, agreement has been at the rate of 50,000 per year. We've had additional services added and subtracted over the years. Um, currently, there's an additional services for the downtown planter maintenance program and also um, the downtown cleanup. Um, the EDA requested we increase the base amount and our recommendation is to increase it by $10,000 per year. Um, they've added additional services in their scope of work and we've asked them to do some reporting and very exciting um, part of their scope of work is going to be re to remove the snowflakes um, in a timely <laughs> manner this year. I so, saw one come down today. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So I would welcome um, uh, Brenda to, to take the floor and talk a little bit about the work that they're doing. Thank you, Madam Mayor, City Council members and city officials. Thank you so much for having us here today. And on behalf of myself and our board of directors and staff, we want to thank you for your continued partnership and support of the EDA. And uh, we're looking forward to a robust year of uh, a work plan that's been developed uh, that was submitted to you along with our budget and our calendar. And in our contract with you, we have the snowflakes being removed by the 28th of February. And I'm happy to say that they are 99% down today. <laughs> so, uh, we thank uh, uh, our design committee for working with that. As you know, we have a four pillar um, backbone to our organization, a design and outreach, a um, promotions and also economic development committees that work very hard to execute our strategic plan. Uh, a couple of things that were not in our calendar that was submitted to you that I wanted to bring your attention to is we are adding a partnership with the historic museum for a historic pub crawl that will be um, a partnership between the EDA and our uh, Kittitas County Historical Museum. We're also adding a um, inclusive Ellensburg Make Music Day, which is a, a nationally, actually internationally celebrated day that we are going to be bringing to um, Ellensburg on June 21st to um, encourage arts uh, and music in the streets of all ages. And um, that'll be another inclusive event that we're gonna be bringing to our, our downtown. We have um, Kelly uh, on, uh, she's our board president, Vandenberg, and she is, I think, on Zoom and might have some comments to make. But before I turn that over to her, just quickly, we have a Pine Street revitalization project that's number one, I think, on our list this year. Uh, that's going to include economic vitality for Pine Street, including business recruitment, family and young adult entertainment. From the design perspective, you'll see parklets and gathering spaces. Uh, attracting tourism and new business, uh, both locally and regionally, and also uh, adding building and tree lighting to Pine Street. Uh, we have a, um, a vendor identified who's actually the same vendor that took the snowflakes down that will be uh, adding some mm -hmm. lighting to our buildings and also revamping the lighting that's currently on Pearl Street that, that needs a little bit of work. Uh, promotions Committee is advocating for I-90 signage with a new mantra that's called Go the Extra Mile. And that's to get off of our, our interstate and go the extra mile and enjoy the, all the downtown brings, including a new mural tour. Uh, we have over 45, I believe, murals downtown. We'll be adding a couple of new ones hopefully this year. And those will be part of a mural, mural self-guided mural tour in partnership with ECR. Uh, advertising outside of our local region for tourism. And then our outreach committee will be developing key partnerships for economic development, filling our empty spaces and um, attracting new business to um, our downtown. The uh, uh, other focus of our, our downtown, you can see on our newly uh, vamped, revamped website, which is Ellensburg, the center of your adventures. A lot of what we do will be focusing on uh, Ellensburg being the center of many things. So um, I, Kelly wants to make comment. That, that's what I had to share. Kelly, are you there? Thank you, everyone. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, as you all know, the EDA has had um, a, a strong vision within our community. And I think 
we are stronger, um, even e even stronger now um, with our current leadership that we have with uh, an amazing amount of volunteers. Um, we've started our, our merchant gatherings, uh, which I hope all of you will join us on the 9th on Wednesday of this week at the uh, uh, partnership that we've developed with uh, the Central Washington uh, College of Business and their new Ellensburg Business Foundry at 421 North Main. And I really do um, want to thank all of you and, and appreciate the partnership and growing partnership that we, we have with the city um, for all of us to help make this community just a phenomenal place to live and, and to work and to play. So thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. And, and I would just add um, staff's recommendation um, is to um, authorize um, the signature on the professional services agreement and the necessary budget adjustments. Madam Mayor, so moved. Motion and second to uh, sign the professional services agreement um, and make the necessary budget adjustments. I have a uh, comment on the motion. I would like to offer a friendly amendment to the contract language under services on item E. Mm -hmm. Did, does Brenda have a copy of this? I do, yep. Okay. As, as do I. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we all received a copy of that. Brenda, hi, it's nice hey. to meet you. I'm Nancy Councilmember Goodlow. Goodlow. Councilmember Goodlow, could you speak a little closer to me? Okay. Uh, I'm chair of the DEI Commission. I know we want to have you come and present to one of our meetings here in the next couple of months or so. Uh, because we could visualize a lot of partnership mm -hmm. opportunities with EDA in terms of supporting events and promoting maybe some new events uh, to get begin to infuse within the community uh, the notion of diversity, equity, and inclusion and what that means and what that can mean for our community. So the, the amendment... Uh, that I would like to offer uh, incorporates that into the agreement that we could partner or we could work with you uh, and possibly other groups. Uh, you mentioned CW. I know they have a lot of things going on mm -hmm. on campus that maybe could be brought downtown. Uh, you know, so I really like to work with you and brainstorm. And Absolutely. Yeah, we're very open to that. We have an equity committee that was uh, dormant a little bit, I think during COVID, but we have folks waiting in the wings. So we would love to welcome or welcome that opportunity to speak with you and develop some ideas and partnerships around that. So yeah. absolutely. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, yeah, we did get a second and I, I just want to check in. Do you have any concerns about the amended language? No, we are fine. None. Who seconded that motion? Rich, apparently. No, I, I made it. He made, he made the motion, and I have well, Bruce as a second for the initial motion, not the, not amendment. the amendment. There was not a second for the amendment. No, the motion maker can accept it as a friendly amendment. So accepted. Okay. So um, before us is a signature on the professional services agreement. Um, including the uh, amended language offered by council member i'm sorry uh, madam mayor you still have to vote on the amendment because it, it, it is proposed as amendment to the contract we have a motion which normally the second would require the amendment will require oh, a second okay but it's been accepted so the order would be to vote on the amendment first and then if cool. that passes, we can separate we that so um so all in favor of the amendment oh, um, I'm, I'll vote in support of this, um, but I, I'm not sure if I can be quite articulate, but it's, it, it's interesting that we're calling out a specific commission for, for this in, in this, through this amendment. We have a number of commissions with whom the EDA has an active and ongoing and long-standing partnership. Um, Arts Commission, 
actually lodging tax, landmarks and design. I mean, we can go right down the thing. So again, I, I, I'll, I will not vote against this. I understand the intent, but it, it, if we be, this is one of those slippery slopes to me, that if we begin to call out specific collaborative partnerships predicated on certain boards and commissions, where do we stop? What, you know, do, because this is called out, is EDA then not to work with Parks and Rec? So again, I, I just want to voice that. I understand the intent of the inclusion of the language. I will not vote against the amendment, but I have a concern that we're inserting this. Yeah, I think I, I would agree with that. And I think we could accomplish the goal by just recognizing all city, any or all city boards and commissions as one of these part, community partner organizations, city boards and commissions, et cetera. I, I don't know, I think we could, I agree, we, we don't want to send the message that there's only one city board or commission that yeah. we'd like collaboration on. And I would offer uh, that on the 24th of February, we're hosting a community-wide nonprofit volunteer fair, another example of our uh, reaching out to other organizations in our community. And uh, that would, had 21 spaces that I think are full. And um, that was a first come first serve, but there's a quite a variety of folks that are uh, represented at that. We invite you to, to join us. It's also our downtown awards night, but that is an example of another way that we're reaching out to be inclusive. David, did you want to offer an amendment to the amendment? Or huh. well, I, I, I can't, honestly, at this point in the meeting to drill down and try to get that, I don't, I don't think I, what if you, what if we said something like the city's boards and commissions and other groups to promote the city and downtown area and expand inclusion in and through very few? I could accept that. I think. I, I mean, I think the key is that we're we're looking to expand inclusion, and th that's the key phrase, right? Yeah, I, I think as I think was that a motion for for I, a moment? I, I would, I could offer that as an amendment to the amendment. Or, we, or I, you, you, from, from uh, elementary stage, you have a motion. The friendly amendment was accepted. So it could either be withdrawn or voted upon. It could be withdrawn by the maker of the amendment or voted upon. Sounds like it'd be cleaner to withdraw the motion for the amendment and then offer a new amendment. Would that, okay. that, that, that be appropriate? Yeah. Okay. okay. So, the the amendment is withdrawn. Is there anyone who wants to offer an alternative amendment? Uh, I would uh, amendment to uh, that letter E under one services would read work with various community partner organizations, the city's boards and commission committees and other groups to promote the city and downtown area and expand inclusion in and through various events. Second. Okay, motion and second uh, for the language just, just read. Um, any further discussion? Yeah, I, thank you for bringing that up first. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 I too will vote aye. So the the, the original motion is amended. Uh, the, the signature on the professional services agreement as amended is before us. So moved. It, it, it was already moved, right? So we just need to vote, right? Unless there's discussion. Uh, well, okay. Is there a discussion? It, comment? Okay. I, uh, I have a comment. Yes. Sorry. Um, I just want to make sure that, that as this added change um, comes back to us for signature, uh, back to the EDA as well. Yeah. We've got that covered. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. Um, so all in favor of the signature on the amended agreement. Aye. 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 I too will vote aye. Yeah, opposed? That motion carries. Thank you very much. 
Good evening. Thank you, Thank you for coming. Yes. Thank you. We are at the city manager's report. Right. Hi, Darren Sternaway, city manager again here. Um, we have on the agenda um, just a notice that a public hearing has been set for February 22nd to consider a type four preliminary plat. Uh, for Mallard Meadows. And again, that's set for the 22nd. Question? Excuse me, did you skip one? Yeah, I'm, I'll go back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm doing things out of order, I apologize. So, um, and then the second would be to request um, the council set a public hearing to declare surplus surplus property um, also for February 22nd. So moved. Second. Motion and second uh, to declare a public hearing for surplus property on February 22nd. Um, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 That motion carries. Thank you. And third would be um, the there's been a request by our new council member to actually move our study session. For 2022, we scheduled study sessions for the second Monday, um, was there prior, or an hour prior to the second meeting of the month. And the request has been to move those to the first meeting of the month. And so um, I would recommend that we continue with the 20 meeting on the 22nd. We have a study session scheduled and that this would start in March. Um, the first study session would be March 7th. That was the request. So, so you didn't share that during the interview? Yes. So, so I, well, I, I, <laughs> I, I, you were going to rearrange our schedule. I, I'm fine with it, but I, I withdrew from two committees from CASA and from uh, Behavioral Health and Recovery Board because of the conflict created by the third one. So I quit two boards to accommodate it. So is there any this is harsh? <clears throat> so do you have quit, more free, we have, you to have quit more, any more to no, do I think we should recognize he has more free time and is that the issue? Well <laughs> so interesting. I don't, yeah. I'm fine. Yeah. I'll make it regardless. I mean, if, if the first Monday is a problem for anyone, we need to know. If not, um, you don't need a vote on that, do you? You did. This would reschedule the regular meeting. Yeah. So, yeah. So, it's so moved. Motion. Second. Um, motion and second to move our regular study sessions to the first Monday of the month. Um, effective in March. Effective correct. March. Because we're already here. <laughs> That's right. We have one more. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I too will vote aye. Excellent. And then just a reminder on February 9th, our finance department is going to be closed. Um, it's been a rough few years, and we have several of our departments doing uh, retreats um, and trainings with our staff. So we'll see a couple more counters closing over the next couple of months just for a day of training. And then finally, um, just a natural gas purchase um, required by um, our city code um, to notify you of natural gas purchases. And that's all I have for you today. Thank you. Uh, council member reports. Council member Elliott. Uh, the only meeting that occurred was uh, the EMS trauma council. And it would just echo uh, what's going on across the board in Healthcare, particularly mid-level and sort of the entry-level positions in terms of how people access the system. Um, we are struggling. Uh, our classes for EMT are about half full. Um, we are lucky to have replaced one of the two paramedics we lost to other systems and we will struggle to fill the second position. Um, and it's basically a capacity issue. There are a lot of people signing out, some prematurely because of the stress um, related to this, some are going to services where they can make double what they make and travel the country. Uh, and in our case, um, it's just, there isn't capacity. There isn't enough people coming into the system. So we're working on that at the local level, trying to incentivize people wanting to be uh, EMS providers in Kittitas County, but this could get interesting. Uh, you're already seeing uh, BLS ambulances instead of paramedic staff ambulances. We're trying to be very strategic in how we do it, but uh, we're sending BLS when we think that that's what's warranted and we're close so that we could replace that. What's the uh, basic life support? EMT private. versus a paramedic. No, there are no private providers in Kittitas County. Private, no. no, good God, no. 
put that down in writing. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's all I got. Thank you, Lola. Okay. Um, I had a couple of meetings this month, Law and Justice and the Utility Advisory Committee. Uh, we also did the DEI interviews to fill the commission vacancies. So I wanted to ask my report. David Miller. David Miller. Uh, four meetings uh, attended, um, three of them virtually. Uh, Kennedy County Homelessness and Affordable Housing meeting, um, which I guess will be my last. Um, the uh, Landmarks and Design meeting, which I guess could be my last, unless I just sit in. Um, and then also I attended the um, uh, Finance Committee meeting actually in person. We went through the uh, fourth quarter numbers, the year-end numbers, and we'll be getting a report, council will be getting a report um, soon on that. Uh, I think without getting into a lot of detail, I think the numbers are encouraging. Um, there's still some lagging, um, lagging into, you know, lagging sectors, if you will, in the economy as we kind of suspect, but I think we're, we're coming out of this COVID period in fairly good shape, I think, uh, financially as the city goes. So I think that's good news and great work, I think, as always from our finance department to stay on top of this. Um, and then I attended uh, the Washington Community Forestry Council meeting, uh, which is tied to DNR and the Urban Forestry Program. So that was my meeting group. Do you have anything to report? Yeah. Number tab. Okay, so a um, few things. Just um, I think over the last two weeks, um, Nancy and the city manager and I had uh, discussions. They were Zoom with our uh, senators, our, our legislative uh, delegation. Um, really, I think did a, a good job. I think they're receptive to hearing what we're talking about in terms of local control. Um, there, there's some really interesting legislation if you're getting AWC's legislative updates um, that could preemptively remove some of the latitude that we have as communities in terms of our zoning uh, options. Um, the, uh, but one of the, I think, real positives that came out of that was um, an encouragement from, uh, that started with Representative Ibarra uh, to put in for a, a request for capital. Uh, the uh, Heidi uh, um, was able to pull together uh, about a four hundred fifty thousand uh, dollar request for the preliminaries on the Helena Street design. Um, In which, a day, I mean, yeah, it was staff is well, which then staff. also was submitted, I believe, to Senator Warnick, so that it was submitted on both sides of the legislature. It's really, really, I thought, quite encouraging, and and one great that you could respond as quickly as we did. But also, if we had not set those uh, conversations up, we would not have had that awareness. So that was a, a positive. The TIP uh, economic development piece continues to move forward. There's roundtables set uh, starting March, I think it's 7th, 8th, and 9th. There are specific groups that they'll be speaking to in those roundtables. So for instance, um, agriculture, um, small business, upper and lower county, there's four or five other different groups that are clustered around a similar set of um, uh, uh, that are aligned. Um, I did a, I actually did the finance committee meeting, um, got to leave early uh, because I had an affordable housing commission meeting. Um, that's continuing to move forward. Um, we will uh, be discussing, I think uh, we have one allocation for the, uh, well, we should be seeing um, the preliminary plat from the habitat project um, in front of council relatively quickly, which will support them to move forward. The commission is also asking for um, clarification of the uh, status, current status of the Hope Source project, um, because at this point within the city, at least that I'm aware of, and I think within community development, we have not seen progress other than an understanding that the costs have gone up, but there's nothing been submitted. Um, so we're pushing a little bit further or a little bit more to determine what our options might be and either proceeding with that uh, or reallocating and investing those dollars differently. Um, I'm meeting with two commission members tomorrow and uh, community development staff to begin to develop a marketing uh, uh, component uh, for the, our affordable housing 
piece. Um, if you recall, we've moved away from a, an RFP process and are looking now to more of an open um, solicitation. Um, that has not been overwhelmingly utilized. And so we're, we want to get together and brainstorm um, really what, what, what approaches we could use to approach our community differently to potentially have, um, have those concepts come in, and particularly with an emphasis on how we could build public-private partnerships. Um, you attended a street meeting. Oh, I did. Yeah, there was a street meeting. I think we have another one, but you might want to send me another because I don't think it's on my calendar. Um, but it was actually, I think I, I, I need to be because um, the one of the members of the street use committee remains in the audience, so I, I'll be circumspect. Um, <laughs> but uh, but I did feel like it was a positive meeting. I think that that um, you know that what we've done, and think, in, in particular, I want to thank the, the city manager Heidi, um, the folks that are together for that conversation. There's myself, the mayor. Um, business owners that have streeteries as well as um, uh, two of our retail uh, business owners. And I think that in itself is a start of a positive conversation that'll tie back to what we're talking about with Unity Park and, and um, the, 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 the potential expansion or not of how we utilize our streets. So um, I think it was a positive meeting. I think we set it in motion. We're coming back with, I think, more concrete um, concepts to kick around at our next meeting. Um, and that ultimately will come back to council. Um, I think that's it. I have a question. Yeah. Portable Housing Commission. Um, has there been any movement? I know that on Catherine Park, there was some desire on their part to dig back into that and give us some guidance. Yeah, that's yeah. Thank you, David. Um, so actually, um, yes, um, that's the next. So there was an initial presentation on the on on the possibilities that we could look at with Catherine Park. Um, that um, I believe. So at our next meeting. Um, we'll review um, that in more detail with an eye toward making recommendation. The thought with the commission, which was I think hopefully similar to um, council's direction, would be to come back with more of a, a conceptualized concrete uh, design that could potentially be marketed to the to the the developer community, whether it's nonprofit or for profit. Um, rather than just an open solicitation to say, we wanna see cottage communities here. It was the idea is we're thinking, can we do um, kind of a 10,000 foot con conceptual uh, that would come back to council ultimately for blessing, which then could be utilized and marketed. And I think that also ties back into the marketing, the, the meeting that I'm, we're having on, it's actually Wednesday, um, with those folks, because it, it it'll all I think it all ties together. But thanks. Yeah, yeah, great. That's good to hear. We have an update on the when the groundbreaking happened with the housing project we approved. The community garden. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that would be no. <laughs> well, my understanding is there've been some conversations with the, with the, with the developer, but my, my understanding is they have not pursued or not moved forward at this point to our knowledge with the funding component. We, we've just provided them with a draft affordable housing agreement similar to uh, in scope to what you approved with Habitat for Humanity at the end of last year. So that just went out to them this week. So it'll be uh, in negotiations for a period of time. So we don't have an agreement in place. We don't have an agreement, but the, but the, the the key really, from my perspective, is they don't have funding. Yeah, it's always dependent on funding. Right? When uh, I attended virtually a, a few different uh, commissions and boards, um, just kind of seeing what they were about, which ones I felt that I would be best uh, served on, uh, which is that list we went over today. I uh, spoke with quite a few of the other council members here as well on which ones that they were moving away from or would like to move away from. Um, and ultimately just came to the agreement that uh, where I was setting at. The planning commission, when I sat on that one, did want me to let you guys know that they are um, alive and still planning. Um, we, we thought they kind of went to the wayland there or something. Um, yeah, that's, I'm not nearly as winded. <laughs> here. You have to go a long ways. 
yeah, you so will just, be once you have and, and, I, and I thought I covered that. So the planning commission basically talked about the work plan. They planned their plan. Planning of the plan. So there wasn't a lot of city planning. It was their work plan for 2022 that was effectively 90% of the meeting. So that's. So exactly. which, so the the land development code revisions that we saw are still in CEPA review. They they uh, are prepared to publish the CEPA. I'm not, I, it's within a short period of time. So the CEPA has not been uh, sent out yet, it, it, but it's being completed right now. So after the CEPA is published, it's 60 days? No, that's just for commerce's um, input. So when the, the CEPA responsible official, who is the community development director, after the comment period ends, then a determination will be issued on that. And following the determination, then it will uh, come to council. So I guess I'm asking, when do we see that again? Uh, thinking probably um, not till uh, one of the March meetings. That's um, uh, in our um, packet tonight, I think in consent uh, was the acknowledgement of the resignation of uh, Molly Edson from Landmarks and Design. And um, we all, most of us have worked with Molly or know of her. Um, and uh, I would just like to offer the suggestion that her service to the city of Ellensburg, to the community, as we know, goes well beyond Landmarks and Design, city council, I think she took a turn as mayor. Um, it strikes me that her contribution to the city and to the community is extraordinary. And I, I would like to see the council acknowledge that in some formal way. Uh, we did that a number of years ago with Martin Katz, who also contributed yeah. greatly. And I think uh, Molly Edson would be worthy of that. I would like to see that something along those lines. I just offered that as a, you know, as a suggestion. Yeah, and uh, city manager, uh, poured that suggestion to me and and I just said let's let's look at the precedent that we've had with Marty Katz and then what you know like what's the threshold for number of years I don't, I don't whatever, think there is a threshold I think you just know it when you know you it. crossed it Nancy yeah. you're good you're yeah. <laughs> yeah someday if I don't die first in this position yeah, right yeah you're going to get acknowledged yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> One step short and then in the street after you, right? Yeah, maybe a tree, <laughs> huh? Tree brick or a park. Bicycle board. Um, well, so thank you. I just <laughs> want to put that out there. I know that's been conversation. So I, I really, yeah. I, I, I think that would be. I could probably add, I, I did reach out to Molly today. We had a discussion or, or I, and offered uh, to see if she could um, come visit us um, at our next meeting on February 22nd. So we'll, we'll find a date um, you know, <clears> a way to commemorate <throat> her service. Yeah, I just, I, you know, a pin for 10 years, <laughs> a plaque for 20 years in service. <laughs> okay. I just want to say I attended uh, the Bluegrass Cora neighborhood meeting with the city manager, public works department, the school district was there. Um, we, it was a lot less formal sitting around here um, and tried to kind of present how we do streets and and what you know where those policies come from and then listened to their concerns so um it it was uh i think well received um but i also think that uh they don't think the problem is fixed yet <laughs> and so it is an ongoing um uh, struggle even uh, even now to to meet their expectations in a timely way and and I guess I'm used to the speed of government so um, I'm, I'm not expecting everything to be fixed immediately but um, but anyway uh, there there was progress and the school district asked for another meeting at some point so they appreciated the engagement um i attended a, a zoom presentation from the mountains to sound greenway they have they received a 
uh, National Historic District, National Historic something um, designation a couple of years ago, they created, they have a draft plan um, for, for implementing that and they were they're looking for for partners and I requested you know a letter <laughs> from them <laughs> outlining exactly what they want from us um, so I think that will that will be coming um, and I think Brad Case was also on the call so I think you know maybe he'll review the the plan and what the impact is for um, for the city. It is a totally voluntary kind of uh, thing. There's, um, let's see. So, uh, the the Department of Ecology came to the Utility Advisory Commission meeting, of which Nancy Goodlow is now chair. <laughs> and uh, did a uh, uh, a presentation. And I, I still struggle with exactly how we're going to meet their expectations. Um, uh, but, but I think, you know, we're gonna, I, I think we decided staff should meet with them one-on-one -on -one and, and kind of ask some of the questions that, that I had remaining, not, it's not just the details it's more of the big picture like where are we going to get the electricity to replace uh the natural gas that we won't be selling and how do we get half of our customers to switch from gas furnaces to uh some to electric i mean that <laughs> those are pretty basic questions and that's what we need to do to meet their requirements well, and, and i think the other piece that was interesting there is and then we can go on but um there's an article that i was reading that basically the, the fields that have been creating the surplus of natural gas which have made it so cheap are leveling out or or tapped out mm. um so there's there's at least one well there's that the fracking which has created the surplus is not going to be creating the same volume that they have been creating um, and and that that could occur within a two to three year period i mean this is not a 10 or 20 year window they're talking about if they continue to frack at current levels just stop drilling and tapping they may be able to get 20 years out of what they've got if they continue at the same pace that they're doing in terms of new fracking, they will tap their fields within three to five. So I think it's another consideration too, um, in terms of that whole. Right. So yeah, um, there's 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 this higher level than uh, you know stuff going on in the energy industry that um, plays into our decisions and how we approach the uh, state mandates. So, and I, for me, the question is, is, is the scope of work that we're laying out gonna answer some of those questions? And we haven't finalized that scope of work yet. So um, I, I think, yeah, that that is something that we'll have to look at. So um, I saw a post, there's sandbags available in case it floods and it might because it's warm and there's still snow on the ground. So um, there was three locations, Whipple Park, Kiwanis Park and 7th, oh, 7th Avenue. And the west end of 7th Avenue, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm mumbling because I don't know the answer. <laughs> okay, I'll look it up. Real quick. <laughs> oh, you got a red card. Um, anyway, it is on the city's uh, website. If you need sandbags, you know where to look. Um, and that's all I have. So, uh, no further business. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.